This video will seek to provide some background information for the anime Apare Ranman. First, I'll share some highlights about the show's creation from an interview with the anime's director, Masakazu Hashimoto. Then, I'll discuss the historical context of the show and compare the show to and tell the story of a real-life transcontinental automobile race that occurred around the same point in history. Apare Ranman is somewhat unusual for anime in being set in the United States. It's natural to ask how this show was conceived of. The process turned out to be completely surprising to me. This information is from a Japanese language interview with the director. From the beginning, it was known that they were creating an original sports anime. Hashimoto, the director, met with producers from Kadokawa and PA Works, and they decided that they wanted an anime that was set in America and that involves a cross-continent journey. Reasons provided for choosing America as a setting included that it was fresh and wild compared to the more common European settings in anime, and also because the variety of backgrounds in the U.S. would support the multicultural cast that they wanted. It sounds pretty familiar so far, but actually at this time, the anime was going to be set in the near future instead of in the past, and it was supposed to be about a golf tournament played in several stages across the country. Very different from what ended up being made. The switch only occurred when the people involved in the production went to a driving range, and afterwards worried that they might not be able to convey the enjoyment of golf through anime. So shortly afterwards, it was decided to change the theme to be about racing, while keeping the original story of underdogs competing against more well-resourced competitors. The timing was also changed to the turn of the 20th century. This was a time of great change in both Japan and the United States, which the director said complements the themes of character development in the show. Now let's talk about the landscape of automobiles in real life during the time of the anime in the early 20th century. Powered cars had only been around for a few decades, and the automobile industry was in its early stages. All this is taking place in Europe and the United States. Although Japan was industrializing rapidly during this period, it was not the major participant in the automobile industry that it would later become. In fact, we have a picture of the first car in Japan, one of French manufacture and imported only in 1898. Now in regards to automobile racing, thanks to a great article called Ocean to Ocean by Model T by Terence M. Cole, I was able to learn about a cross-country auto race in 1909. The similarities are intriguing, but ultimately the differences prevail. I wasn't able to find whether the people working on the show had done research about historical races for the anime, only that they had visited Los Angeles and surrounding areas for location research, but some aspects seem similar enough that I imagine they drew inspiration from this particular race. There had been other races before the one in 1909, perhaps even more impressive ones at that. In 1907, a French newspaper sponsored a race from Beijing to Paris, and in 1908, a car race was organized that went from New York to Paris, with cars crossing the Pacific Ocean by steamship. Additionally, other smaller races were held, such as the Giddon Tour Series, with the goal of popularizing and publicizing the role of automobiles. Some quick comparisons can be made. I noticed that this anime starts before 1909. I didn't realize this during my original viewing, but in the first episode there's a really short shot of an American flag with only 45 stars, which was only in use from 1896 after Utah became a state until 1908. Also about the races themselves, it is certainly true that these were promotional tools for the companies involved, as the race in the anime is. However, at the turn of the century there were not only a couple of huge automobile companies. This is a bit of an anachronism that is likely drawn from the industry of today. Cole points out that in 1909 there were over 250 firms building and selling automobiles. Okay, so what happened in the race in 1909? It was staged by Meyer Robert Guggenheim, a car racing fanatic born to the very wealthy Guggenheim family. He was inspired to sponsor a race from New York to Seattle. Similar to the anime, there were to be 30 fixed checkpoints in between that drivers had to stop at. Guggenheim hoped to attract top manufacturers from around the US and Europe to participate, but on June 1st, only 5 cars showed up, including one of his own cars driven by a higher driver. You see, in 1909, car culture was entirely different from what it is today. First, car ownership was really rare. Extremely rare. In 1909, one estimation was that only 0.2% of people owned cars, which is actually pretty well reflected in an early scene in an anime which shows a number of horse-drawn carriages alongside trolleys and self-powered automobiles. Also, roads at the time were a far cry from the omnipresent asphalt in the United States today. Indeed, one of Guggenheim's major motivations for staging the race was to show the need for better roads, the majority of which were impossible to pass in the rain or snow. Just as is shown in the anime, large portions of the race were effectively off-road, and in reality many stretches involved pushing through mud and digging through snow. 
Furthermore, driving itself was actually quite controversial, with significant attention paid to fatal accidents, as cars were capable of speeds that were extreme compared to the bicycles and carriages that they shared roads with. Commentators at the time asked for speed limits to be set at 20 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour. One particularly concerned preacher argued that cars should not be allowed to go much faster than walking speed. The race went well enough as can be expected with challenges including weather, quicksand, and fuel explosions and driving around the clock, as detailed in the article, though fortunately no run-ins with outlaws like in the anime. 23 days after the race began, the winner, a Ford Model T, crossed the finish line in Seattle. I've buried this so far, but that's the real significance of the race. The Model T was different from most of the automobile market at the time in being lightweight and therefore more affordable and suited for everyday use. Despite the controversy of the race, it attracted significant public attention and was the perfect way for Henry Ford to show off the automobile to the American public. Even though months later it was found that Ford had technically broken the rules by replacing parts of the car and was disqualified, by then the Model T was already on its way to becoming perhaps the most influential car of all time, and certainly one of the most popular. To conclude, I learned some very interesting things about the anime and about the early years of automobiles and racing in the United States in the course of making this video. Again, if you're interested in the whole picture, check out the article Ocean to Ocean by Model T by Terrence M. Cole, which should be freely available online. The change in direction of the anime and the accuracies of the anime, whether intentional or coincidental, were really not what I was expecting. There's other aspects of this anime that are interesting, such as the interaction of different ethnic and immigrant groups in California during this period, or how the anime was influenced by the direction of American Western films, but I hope this video can at least shed light on one central part of this anime. Thank you.